Hello and welcome to the C++11 Beginner Tutorials by Gamer to Creator. I'm Chris. So now that we've talked about pointers and dynamic memory, we're going to talk about some C++11 topics. Uh, the first thing that we're going to talk about is Unique Pointer. This is a Smart Pointer class that will allow you to store a pointer to dynamic memory and have it free itself automatically whenever that smart pointer falls out of scope. So we're not going to need this stuff. We are going to need our foo class. I'm going to get rid of all this. And I've zoomed in a little bit to make the text a little bigger, which I think is going to help you guys to read what I'm typing. I looked in some of the videos and sometimes the text does seem to be a little bit small. It's hard for me to see that because I'm on a big screen here. So I zoomed in. I hope that helps. Okay. So we're going to need to include a new header file called memory. And inside this memory header file and we can usually pink peek it or okay this will work you can see there's a bunch of stuff in here somewhere in here should be a reference to unique pointer wow here we go so you got your shared pointer in here, and somewhere in here should be unique pointer. I think this is it. This is one of the header files included with the STL. So you need to include this to get access to the C++11 smart pointers. Then you would declare one, starting with the namespace, and then unique pointer and this is a template class so it works with any type we're going to use our foo and you don't use foo pointer you don't you use the class just the class and then I'm going to say a pointer to a foo now we've declared this but we haven't given it anything yet so we haven't created any memory on the heap that we want to put inside this unique pointer so we can do new foo. We can call the constructor and pass it the pointer that we just created here with new. And it will take a copy of this, store it internally, and when this object falls out of scope that it was declared in, this pointer will have delete called on it automatically for you. And that's why it's smart. A regular pointer will not automatically delete the data it points to. Now I'm going to prove this to you by declaring the destructor and stake out detour called. And we're going to have STD. Uh, seat called. Okay, so when we get to right here, the constructor will be called, and when we get to down here, the destructor should be called. So first, let's run it and see what happens. And since we didn't pause the program, we couldn't see exactly what happened. So I'm going to declare a string and say, um, just call it a buffer and say std get line. I have to include string for this. 
C++ 11, I believe, is when they s added get line, but I'm not 100% sure on that. And then we'll say sin and buffer. So what this is going to do, did I get that backwards? So what this does, I declared a buffer string, and the get line will use whatever input stream you send to it. In this case, we're doing the console in, and it'll take the whole line that you enter and put it into the buffer. It's pretty simple, but really that's just enough to pause the program. As you can see, the CTOR the constructor has been called because we're right here. We're inside that function. And the end of main has not actually happened yet. So I'm going to type in some text here. I could just push enter. Um, and now we're right here. I don't think the constructor has been called yet. Do we're now we're destructing the string. Step out, step into. Now this is the unique pointers destructor. This is going to call delete, as you can see here with this uh, rather complex STL code, that there is some deleter stuff here. So we're gonna step over, into, into, step out, step into. Oh, and there it is. Called delete on our pointer right there. So I just wanted to show you that actually there was a delete call, as you saw. And that was actually called on the pointer that we created and passed to the constructor. So there is a matching delete, it's just part of this class. And that looks weird. Okay. Now there's some other things you can do. C14 actually has a make unique function, which is a template function, which works a lot like. Um, it's a template function and it kind of has a similar syntax to just creating a unique pointer directly using the constructor except that it does a little bit of extra work. It'll actually take the parameter list, pass it on to the constructor of new. It'll pass whatever you put in here to here whenever it calls internally new and creates your foo object. And this is sort of the new way of programming with C++ in which you don't really have to handle naked pointers with new and delete anymore because this is going to call it internally for you, return a temporary and move that into this object. And I can prove to you that I can pass 800, 600, and internally it will use these values for the constructor of our foo. Let's set a breakpoint there. Now here's our pointer to a foo. It's a unique pointer and the object inside of it actually does have the values. And I don't know why that is a zero. But if you look right here and you go to pointer, you can see that width and height are 600, 800 and 600 respectively. Now, just to point, uh, point out, let's say we create a scope, which you can do in C++. You can create a scope within scopes without any, um, you don't have to have an if statement here. This doesn't have to be if something. We have actually created a scope. So because this will f delete itself when the scope falls, 
when the scope ends, I should say, this variable will not exist here because it's in a subscope. So it will be created and deleted within this scope. And we can watch that by As you can see, the destructor has already been called and we have not exited this function yet. It's because this scope ended. And the same thing for functions. If I was to create this in a function up here, and I'll go ahead and do that for an example. Then I'm going to remove this so it calls the constructor with our text in it. First thing we're going to do is call some func. And you'll see by the time we get to here, our object will be created and destroyed. Now it's because we called this function, we jumped up to here, we created our unique pointer, and it was destructed when this function exited because this is a scope. It's the function scope. And then when we came back, it was already gone. Okay, so that is a unique pointer.